Okay, this is a video for um, a sub sub uh, assembly of this uh, this wheel assembly. And uh, if you look at this uh, um, dolly, okay, so we have three wheels with their own uh, some little parts. So you can consider one wheel. This whole set is a sub assembly, uh, which is here. If you take a look at this. So we will assemble this first, then in the uh, final assembly, uh, we can just uh, add three of them, the sub-assembly, into this big assembly file. All right, so let's turn this off. And uh, first, you want to uh, build a new file. Um, actually, before we start the assembly, uh, we need those um, bearing balls. So that's going to be another file, uh, another modeling file. And uh, let me just open that assembly to see how big this ball is. Uh, okay, it should be here. Well, this information, the diameter is 1 8. So, what we need to do is uh, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, so that's 16, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, a half, and 18. Okay, so 18 balls uh, for this ball bearing. Um, let's close this. So what you need to do is first build a new modeling file for the, the ball. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to uh, rename this, but you need to rename this and find it a proper folder. So in here you can either, um, well, I guess um, the fastest way is go for insert and design feature. Uh, in here you have Sphere and uh, keep in mind you have to be in uh, this advanced with full manual to have uh, this command. Uh, I think I it's not there if you're in a default um, interface. Okay, so insert your design feature, which is a sphere, and the diameter will be wide, and set point, uh, specify a point, and by default it's on the origin, so you simply click OK. It's there, and you can save this file as your bearing ball or whatever in the same folder. Okay, I'm going to close this. So, next step. Um, build a an assembly file and then you can rename this as sub assembly so you know um, this is this is an um, sub assembly okay and uh, find a place to save it and okay all right now I think um, in this uh, folder uh, in this command uh, you need to pick your parts for this assembly so since we don't have any parts open or any parts loaded, it's blank here. Uh, so you want to open the folder and find the model you have made, okay? which I have them here. And uh, what you need is the wheel, of course, then I can hold down control and uh, select wheelbase and uh, the bearing and the ball you just made. Okay, four uh, four parts for this sub assembly and uh, they're loaded and now. You can insert them. Um, the positioning you can select absolute origin, so they will be all stacked together in the middle. Let's click OK. And uh, there you go. You have the ball, the 
the wheel, the and the bearing. So first, let's see. Um, if we think Z positive is um, up, I would like to rotate this thing down. So um, just click. Then you have this pop-up menu. You can choose move. In here, by default, it's dynamic, and uh, we can drag this handle rotation to 180 degrees. Okay, and then click OK. And then we can move the center point of this to the, the origin. Uh, so if you missed this pop-up menu, the move component command will be here. Then let's see uh, points. We can choose point to point. So from point, that will be the center of this circle. Then to point, we can just manually uh, type in the point from this point dialog. And uh, by default, it's the uh, absolute origin. So that's what we want. Just click OK. Right. And then for the wheel, it's a little bit easier. You can use constraint to move it. Okay. Before that, we um we can first apply a assembly constraint for this wheelbase, uh, which is this icon, or it's here in the menu bar. Um, so imagine we are uh, like in a in the, in the space. Now everything is floating. Uh, so to constrain your parts, you want at least one thing is fixed. So we we will apply this fixed constraint for this wheelbase. That's kind of your anchor point for this whole assembly, right? And let's change it to a nicer color. Okay. Now next we can uh, use this as your anchor. We can move things around. So for the wheel, oops. Uh, okay, that's right pick the wheel, apply a constraint, and this time we need a fit. Okay, So fit is um, to align to cylindrical face. That's a cylindrical face to another cylindrical face. So there will be a coaxial. Um, however, they don't, uh, you can still move this along the, the axis. If you have this dynamic on, you can still move this left and right, but not X and Y. So if you try X, then the move. All right. Now, that's why we need a, an extra constraint for the wheel. That will be touch align. If your model is correct or your, your dimension is correct, okay, we want to make this face to touch this face, okay, and FA. See, uh, if your dimension is right, you should have no gap between them. And if you do have um, a gap, there's a workaround. Okay, let me delete this dimension uh, constraint, and uh, let's move it out so it's clear. There's another constraint you can apply. Which is a uh, center. Okay, so we have those two, uh, two inside or outside face. That's the same. So that's a pair of faces. And also, the side face of this wheel is a pair of faces. That is uh, a pair to a pair. Right? So you can have the option to put one face or one point in the middle of two points. Or two points in the middle. Of. It's the same. It's just the, the the vice versa direction. So here we can choose uh, two to two, which means this two face, the center of this two face, will be the center of these two faces. Okay. So this way, even if your your wheel is narrow, um, you have a gap. You will have two equal gap on on the both sides, which is nicer. Um, 
Okay, and uh, let's try to move this up a little bit so we can add some bearing boards uh, between them. Alright, so for the bearing boards, um, this ball would, uh, let's see, uh, you would want this face, right, to touch uh, this trench. So let's try it. You want the face of the ball to touch uh, this face, and also the face of the ball to touch that face. Let's take a look to see if this can be done. Um, first, let's move this board to, um, to a better location. Maybe on X or Y. So we'll eliminate the Y offset. Also, um, First, make those two holes fit. Make this this hole and that hole fit, and that will be a fit constraint between this hole and that hole. Okay, so this uh, this bearing cup will not move. Now let's move the ball dynamically to here. We can. Type this zero. Okay, control Z. Type Y to zero. Now it's in the middle. And uh, now let's make a uh, section view so I can take a look at how this thing is. Uh, okay, that's your section view. Okay, by the way, you can pick any orientation. Um, then you see this Z offset, we can change that to zero. Okay, it's not moving. Maybe just make this to zero, zero. And okay. And F8 here. And if you look at this uh, navigator, you can see this that's your section and if you check this checkbox you can see the uh, the cutting or the intersection lines with uh, the, the section plane so that looks pretty good it's actually a, the ball has a larger radius so it cannot touch the top of this uh, trench you have to pick those two side faces and uh, you don't really have to be this uh, detailed on, on this thing. If you double click, it will turn off the section view. Okay. And uh, what's next? We need to make this an array. So you don't have to insert uh, another 17 balls. So here, array is down here in the component drop down menu. Um, create component array. Okay, now we can pick the object is the ball, right? Then we can click OK. Next, we want a circular uh, array and click OK. And now you need to define the axis, which is a cylindrical face in this case. And you can see the there's a direction, uh, the rotation direction, and the uh, uh, so here, total number of your array, we will need 18 uh, bearing walls, and uh, the angle here is not the span of the array, it's actually the interval between two, uh, two bearing walls. So that will be 360 divided by uh, 18, that's actually 20. Okay, then if you click OK. You can see that's your um, component array. And let's hide the bearing and look from top. That looks pretty much uh, the right 
distance between them. You don't want overlapping. Um, like if you input 20, it, it's probably will overlapping uh, overlap each other. Okay. And now, um, what's next? This is the ball that has uh, the constraint. You also want this ball to touch the top of this uh, wheelbase. So let's add another constraint, uh, touch a line, and pick this ball and pick the top face of this. Okay. And now the good thing about arrays, they all uh, follow this uh, original copy. Okay. Now that's actually already uh, uh, finish the, the sub-assembly. Um, some details you can do is you can click on one part you have this option to edit display and here you can change the color okay. so let's say the wheel is probably gray or black and uh, let's change that to some realistic color then for this bearing cup, you can change to say blue, okay, to distinguish from the other parts. And for the balls, we have so many balls, so I'm gonna pick from the navigator and right click. You have this added display here also. You can change that to yellow or whatever you like. And also for this part, so. That way you have a easier, uh, easy to see where your uh, parts are, what are different parts, and uh, some of you might be just very uh, annoyed by the constraint icons here, as you can see. Uh, you can right click on this constraint and uh, disable this display um, constraint in uh, graphics window. So you will not see them anymore. And uh, if you like to, you can right click and do a true shading to bring uh, some idea of how this will look like in the real life. Okay. So that's all for this uh, sub-assembly.